there's a meme I've been sharing for years that always gets a really big laugh out of staff when I speak to school districts. And it's, if I die, I hope it's during a staff meeting because the transition to death would be so subtle. And that always gets a laugh out of people because I've been there too, where I've been in staff meetings as a teacher and sitting through that and just hating that process and feeling there's so many better things that I could be doing with my time. And I thought about that meme when I was actually talking to uh, Jordan Anderson from Barrington School District, who I will be joining uh, in June of 2024, when she talked about how they actually really focus on making professional learning really relevant and not based on what they think, but based on the feedback that they're receiving from their staff. And that to me is so, so important is that a lot of times we try to guess what people are good at. We try to guess what people want to learn. And the easiest way to kind of find that out is ask them, right? If you want to find out what people are really good at, ask them, what are you passionate about? What do you think your strengths are? How do we tap into this? Hey, what's something that you would find beneficial in your learning? And so Jordan uh, did a really great job explaining how they do that. She talks about um, that connection to social emotional learning in professional learning, not only for students, but also for their staff as well. It was an awesome podcast. I can't wait to uh, join the school district in Barrington. If you're listening right now, I can't wait to see you all. I'm really excited because I know you're doing really incredible things. Uh, you're going to learn a lot from Jordan, especially if you're in administration about bringing out the best and the people you serve, how you can bring out their full capacity. And my co-author, Allison Apsey of What Makes a Great Principal talks about the idea of accessing capacity as opposed to building it because we build it, it feels like we did it as opposed to just really kind of helping people find the gifts that they already have. I thought that was just such a good point of what Jordan talked about in this podcast. Uh, you're going to love it. I learned a ton. I know you will as well. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, this is George Kroos and welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I am so pumped because Jordan just took off on me. It was totally a technical glitch. Uh, to have Jordan Anderson, who's the Director of Learning Services for Barrington 220 School District. I will be actually joining uh, them all in June of 2024. And uh, if you don't know where Barrington is, it is actually in uh, the greater Chicagoland area. And so uh, Jordan didn't know this about me, but I'm actually, I'm a big Bears fan. I don't know. Do you know that song? Of course. Yes. Okay, I just don't know. I actually, <laughs> I didn't know that was a, that was the song. So I, I'm glad uh, someone knows that. But yes. uh, I'm so pumped to join you. I'm actually, you know, like I was a big, uh, I was a big, uh, uh, William Refrigerator Perry and, you know, like the, the little, the, the bear. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, love it, I love it. So, uh, so Jordan, actually, uh, I'll be joining you, as I said, in, in June of 2024. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. Talk about some of the amazing things that are having in happening in Barrington to 20. Uh, I love coming out to the area. I remember years ago, I think it was like 2013, 2014. Uh, I can't remember what it was called, but I think it's idea the idea conference or something like that. It was oh, like, yeah, sure. what, it was like, I, was it ice? Am I like, was that what it used to be? It was something Illinois. It was ice yes. before, was it not? There there are acronyms everywhere. So there, I have no doubt, yeah. yes. But IdeaCon is one for sure. And there I, there are many, so I'm sure you were at those. <laughs> yeah, cause I know um, Maria Galanis, uh, a dear friend of mine, she's, and that's where I, I first started connecting with her. So I, I just love the area. It's got like a, a special affinity because of the bears and obviously Michael Jordan, you know, my favorite basketball player of all time. Uh, and so I'm actually looking, I got a Michael Jordan, you know, uh, poster right, right beside my wall for inspiration every day. So Jordan, if you can just kind of tell everyone who you are, what you do today and how you got there, I think it's a great place to start. Sure. Uh, so I currently serve as director of learning services for Barrington 220 School District, as you mentioned, just outside of uh, Chicago. And uh, my career, you know, up to this point, I started off as a teacher, uh, taught elementary school. I also taught special education at the elementary level, uh, started to kind of grow in my you know, leadership by working as a team leader uh, before moving school districts and also serving on uh, some teams that worked to provide professional learning to other schools across the country uh, related to professional learning communities. And at that time, decided to uh, take the leap and start exploring some administrative positions. So I worked as an assistant principal 
uh, for an elementary school and also for a pre-K kindergarten center mm -hmm. uh, here in the Chicagoland area and served as a principal of summer school programming, director of summer programming, and then uh, moved on here to Barrington, where I've served as director of student services, uh, overseeing uh, special education programming in the district. And now my current role as director of learning services, I oversee a number of core areas in the district, including um, professional development, social emotional learning, uh, the MTSS process, our extended programming, uh, which is uh, similar to a gifted program uh, here in Barrington. I also work with our new educators and plan all of our new educator orientation uh, programming. So uh, absolutely love, love my job. I love what I do. I work with the most amazing people and uh, Barrington 220 is an outstanding community and definitely a, a great place to be a part of. I love that. So tell, tell, this is, uh, you know, I do obviously do professional learning all over the place. And I'm like curious your thoughts on this. Um, there's, you know, you, sometimes I walk in and you can see people, um, they're sitting as far away as possible in an auditorium. And they're like getting there early so they can like make sure they have a back row seat so they can check out when they assume it's going to suck. And I think it's a really, you know, and I, that tells me something. Do you know what I mean? Like, so they're, not excited about the day they're not excited about being there in many cases and how do you ensure that people find value in those professional learning days like when you actually have that time to learn so you can be better for you know your, your students for yourself like how do you ensure that as part of the process because you know i i know a lot of people they, they dread it and my favorite compliment is this one that was actually pretty good <laughs> Right? When, they, when they throw actually in there because it was like i was i my ex you know it's, it's awesome to go into places where the expectations are super low right like you only go up yes. so, so like how do you ensure that's you know uh you know a meaningful and relevant you know professional learning experience absolutely so i think you know my answer to that would kind of be twofold so as we all know, and this is true for every career, there's always going to be professional learning that has to take place because it's a mandate or because it's a requirement yeah. uh, or because we've adopted a new curriculum or, there, you know, there's something coming down that we don't have a choice but to provide, you know, some professional learning on that. And I have found, at least in my experience, that being super transparent about that as the leader in the room or as the one delivering the professional learning opportunity actually does help create a more accepting and relaxed environment. So I think it's uh, sometimes a little bit dangerous to expect that every single person who's sitting there is glad to be there. I think there are so many other things going on in the world and in just in personal lives and, you know, children and in families and other interests that really do often kind of take over when we are expected to be sitting in a room learning about a new state mandate or learning about something else that's coming to the district that we have to find time to to train people on and especially in a school district and acknowledging that my only experience is working in school districts but teachers have the hardest job and they always need time in their classrooms and so how do we balance delivering those things that are required and providing professional learning and growth opportunities with re being respectful of the fact that they have lots and lots to do when they need time in their classroom. So I think my first response there would be acknowledging that and saying like, I understand as the one standing here that you have a hundred other things on your mind, but let's really try to refocus right now and, and focus on this because it's going to help in the long run and really setting the stage and the expectation for why we're doing this and why is this important and how will this impact you when you return to your classroom? On the flip side of that, I think we do a great job here in Barrington of, of two specific things when it comes to professional learning. And the first is gathering feedback uh, from staff on what exactly they want to learn about. Mm -hmm. And the second is offering professional learning opportunities to staff that they have the choice to attend. And we use our own staff. We have just an amazing um, amount of staff in this district who have so much to offer so we run something called Summer University uh, and, and different opportunities throughout the school year as well, uh, where our own staff is teaching a variety of courses. And 
staff then have the choice to attend. So nothing that we do uh, over the summer is required. And uh, just in the last three weeks, I have um, processed over 2000 registrations for professional learning opportunities happening over the summer. And I think that really speaks to the dedication of staff and to the fact that our district does do a very good job of putting together opportunities that are exciting, that are relevant, and that staff really feels is important, you know, to their own professional growth. And they then as a result, take that opportunity to participate because they have choice. And I think choice and acknowledging the uh, schedules of everyone, but also putting some of that professional learning at the forefront because it is important creates a really nice balance. You know, that, that is, that is so important is that people see the relevancy in what they're doing and they have some options to do that. And, you know, obviously if they didn't feel you're meeting their needs and it's, there's choice to it, then they wouldn't show up. Right. So they are obviously mm-hmm. doing an amazing job. The, the, the one thing that you said, and this is something I did as an administrator and it was really, really helpful. Um, we would have, I think, uh, in my district at the time, it was 10 professional learning days, you know, where we had our staff, it was, I think it was like once a month, you know, during the months that we were, um, you know, teaching in school and kids were there. And I, I knew before I came there that those days were fully about professional learning. Like it was like, you're going to have PD the entire day. This is what's happening. And I wanted, I knew as a teacher, I wanted some time in my classroom to like prep stuff. And, you know, like, it's pretty rare to do this. So I just said to my staff, I said, look, here's, here's what I hope to do. And you tell me if we're okay with this. And like, let's see if we can ha- come to an agreement. Uh, I do have to, there are some things we have to do. There are some, prof- and we want to grow as a staff. So what I'm asking you is that, can we do this where we are fully immersed in the morning and the professional learning? Like you have your full attention, you're totally engaged in this. And if you do that, then the afternoon is yours to do whatever you need to do. Mm-hmm. And they were like, yep. <laughs> yeah. And it was and right. just like, and, and I actually remember one time people were checking out. I'm like, do you remember we made this deal? Do you remember we made the deal? And they're like, yeah, we gotcha. And so, and it, it was, they so appreciated that because I think, you know, it's there is a thing that it, it does kind of bug me in the sense that we believe if we're not delivering something, people aren't learning as opposed mm-hmm. to the idea, like they're doing a ton of learning, um, you know, on their own. It's not like you have to, something has to be delivered. We, we want our students to find their own pathway to, you know, find that success. And so do we create those opportunities where, you know, we, we create in, and I know this, I'm all about collaboration. I think it's really important, but I do think you need some time on your own. You need some isolation time and uh, you, you can't really bring anything valuable uh, to a group if you don't actually have time to reflect, think and create some stuff together. So I, I love kind of that focus that you have. Um, you did mention before we got on the podcast, the, the focus on social emotional learning, how you know utilize that for students, um, talking about that for your professional learning days. I, I know this is like, I'm putting you on the spot. You, you shared something really, and I was like, oh, I wish we recorded that. So all I need you to do is say exactly what you said before we recorded. <laughs> I will try. I, I, I wrote it all down. So if you did anything, no, okay. I'm teasing. Perfect. Perfect. And it was like, it was so powerful. What you said, and that was really, really important to share. Sure. So, uh, I know I mentioned, you know, the areas that I oversee in the district, but I do feel, especially, uh, you know, with you joining our district in June and, you know, really thinking through just, you know, the abilities of our students and intelligence and talents and all of those pieces, it has has really made me think a lot about the areas that I uh, work closely in here and three specific areas of social emotional learning and professional learning and professional growth. And then also our extended learners uh, that we are looking to really, you know, tap into abilities and and all of those Hmm. uh, pieces. And while I oversee extended learning, It is an important piece of my role and the role of everyone in the district to tap into that for every student that is that is in this district, not just our extended learners, of course. And so for me, I'm really thinking a lot about, you know, how do we address the abilities and intelligence and and talents and all of those pieces for every single learner here in Barrington? while making sure that we are providing quality professional learning and development for our staff and our families and how do we meet the social emotional needs and make sure that 
that is also a really key component to, to healthy kids. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think the academic, um, push is, um, a little bit outweighed at times, just nationally, you know, as a nationwide thing over the social emotional needs of students, adults, you know, I think everybody. And so for me, I think we are really trying to look at the whole child. And if we can really address, you know, the social emotional health, Mm -hmm. as well as providing staff with those professional learning and growth opportunities, then how does that help us really tap into, um, you know, our learners and making sure we're providing, you know, personalized experiences for kids and really looking at what is best for this particular student. And what I did yesterday with another student may not work for this student and kind of balancing all of those things together. Yeah. I I just wrote something kind of saying like, Hey, when we look at best practices and someone says to me, Hey, like we, this is shown to work with 90% of the students. My first thing is, is like, what are you doing with the other 10%? Are you just saying 90% is good enough? Or are you actually ensuring that you kind of iterate, think about some of these things differently? The, 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 one of the things that you said reminded me, I was the keynote at the national, I think it's the national association of gifted children. Uh, and yeah, it was there. It was great. <laughs> oh, you were there. You were there. I was. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So now, you know, I'm telling the truth when I, when I tell you the story, sure. I remember, yeah. I remember, and that's. Oh, now I know why you brought me in. Okay. So now, okay. Cause like th- there's some alignment there. Cause I remember starting off saying like, I know that this, the name of this organization is the gifted children, but I actually, one of the things I said right at the beginning was we have to see that every kid has a gift, but sometimes it's not just about, but we, we recognize giftedness in the sense that we have kids who are really good at the things that we're deeming important in education. But you know, I have, I believe I have gifts that were never measured in school, but I had opportunities to explore them, whether it was through, you know, fine arts, um, you know, it was through, uh, you know, sports, physical education, things like that, but it doesn't necessarily fit into that, that little box. So, okay. I didn't, I forgot that you were there. So no wonder you brought me, I get it now. Yes. Well, and actually you had mentioned something similar to me even before the conference. So I think we first spoke perhaps a few weeks beforehand. Yeah. And honestly, that really resonated with me because like I said, while our extended program is something that I work closely with, I, I believe wholeheartedly in everything that you've said and, you know, in reading Mm -hmm. the innovators mindset, whether we're talking about students or adults, uh, anybody that we all do have really, really unique gifts. And when I think back to my great teachers, when I was a child, they all did that. They all tapped into what we were all individually good at. And so it's really important to me that we continue that conversation and recognize that in any place that I work. Okay. That, you know, I, so again, I'm I'm mentioning my newest book, what makes a great principal, because I actually wrote something. I was like, I forgot I wrote it. And I talked about my own kids (laughs) and I said, I said, if my kids are in your classroom, I want you to see that they're even though they're in the same family, they're very unique, just like everyone else. And I, you know, it's kind of like, you know, it's like, that's the one thing we all have in common. We're all unique and we all have our own strengths and, you know, gifts and, you know, places where we can grow. So I love that. Okay. Now this is now putting some pressure on me, uh, based on what you said. Okay. So I'm coming in. Um, we're, we're hoping that some of your staff who are still kind of, you know, deciding whether they're going to come or not. Um, you know, cause it, cause it, I love that you say, you know, you give them choice. So what, what is the hope for that time when I'm with you all? Like, what do you hope to achieve? What do you hope to do this? And this is, you know, this is being recorded. So if I don't yes. like, what you, if I don't like what you say, I'm not posting. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. no, uh, obviously so- I'm kidding, but I would love to hear this because I think it, it, this is one of the things that I like to do is kind of have these meetings, but recorded. So, you know, kind of people see the, the, the thinking behind us putting this together. Absolutely. So I, I would say that our staff and our community here in Barrington 220 is absolutely the best of the best. We have amazing teachers. uh, And when I think back to your, something from your book, um, from the innovators mindset, there was something in there about how, you know, leaders really need to, to work with those innovative teachers and then get out of their way because they, they know what they're doing. They want to be innovative. They want to do what's best for kids. And so 
I really have subscribed to that and, and try to communicate in every single training or meeting that I'm in that, you know, we trust you and we know that you are working hard to, to be innovative and adjusting to the needs of your learners. And so what I'm hoping from your visit is that everyone will feel incredibly inspired by the mere opportunity to make such a difference in the lives of kids and to tap into their gifts and talents and figuring out ways to do all the things that we have to do, all of the things that are required of us to do while, while tapping into those gifts and while being innovative in the process. And I think everyone kind of has a different definition of innovation, but, you know, after reading your book, I think we can, we can kind of simplify this to, you know, what is best for this learner? How do we personalize this? How do we get our students from, you know, A to B in a way that works for that particular student while acknowledging that there is so much more that, you know, that goes into being a teacher and so much more that is required and how can we kind of balance those things? I swear, like you, I swear you were spying on me this morning. Like some of the stuff that you're talking about, I'm like you were kind of in my head. So I actually, <laughs> tweet, I just tweeted this. Um, this is actually from uh, Abby R- R- Ramos Stanutz, who uh, wrote a chapter in uh, "What Makes a Great Principal," and it totally aligns with what you said because she talked about what makes a great leader, and she said a great principal is a person who empowers teachers to be the best they can be, a leader who really cares about teaching and their relationships above all else. Someone who holds back the paperwork avalanche so teachers are allowed to stretch and grow. Over the years, we teachers have wanted a lot of things from administrators, but I truly believe that the best way to cultivate talent is to give your staff is the power to make it happen. And so mm-hmm. that's kind of like, it's just like what you said. I, and I, like you actually look at my tweets. I tweeted this before <laughs> we got on and it's just amazing that you uh, share. So I'm, first of all, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie, I'm so honored that all the stuff that you mentioned from my work. So sometimes people bring me in, they have no idea <laughs> anything I've ever done. So <laughs> I'm like, I'm like a little, I'm, I'm a little red. I'm a little, I'm, I appreciate it. And I'm, I'm, it just makes me more excited. Cause you know, I, you know, it may, you made me feel really appreciated in this too. So if you can do yeah. that in a podcast, then I'm sure you do that every day with your staff. So it, it really means a lot, but I'm excited to join you, Jordan. It was really, this is one of the things I love about doing this podcast. Uh, I, I just feel like I get to know people um ahead of time and just you know i just admire the work that you're doing and it sounds like just amazing stuff and i'm like now in the situation where i feel like i can only screw things up <laughs> no. you know, like what well, it seems like everything's going pretty well there so I'm, I'm excited to be with you all yes everyone's really looking forward to meeting you uh, i think it'll be a great event for our community and students and staff and it'll be a great day we can't wait yeah well th- jordan thanks for inviting me and thanks for taking time on your busy day and uh thanks thanks so much and go bears right Ho- this, yes, I, go you know what bears. before don't we go the cubs, though. don't forget about the cubs listen <laughs> yeah for well cubs what what do they won the one one uh world series is that what they won but one think, though right they did and i think they're in first place today so okay. <laughs> take that for something it is may it is may 2nd <laughs> right, right. of this. just give you a heads up <laughs> okay okay i'm gonna get this before we go this is the last thing i'm gonna ask you okay Caleb Williams, is he going to be good? Is, I'm just recorded. So like, what's going on? Let's see what you say. I think he is. I think he's got the skill. I think, right. he'll, I think he'll do a good job. I, I we'll caught, see. I we'll come it back and, and talk about it, it in here. We'll talk, I cannot wait. I cannot wait to see what happens there. So I've been a Bears fan since 85 and they've gone downhill ever since. So uh, I'm excited about it. But thanks for having me. Thanks for taking time on the Thank podcast. You. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening. Have a wonderful day.